Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, this is our 22nd meeting and today we are assembled here to discuss about uh, the first assignment uh, which actually has uh, two parts. In the first part, you are asked to obtain an optimized uh, three-stage runge kutta scheme for an autonomous system for the solution of the ordinary differential equation as given by equation 1. Please note that uh, autonomous equation implies that uh, the right hand side of 1 is not an explicit function of time. That is the definition of autonomous system. Now, in the second part, we uh, wanted uh, to use the optimized RK3 scheme that you have obtained in the first part to solve the following differential equation. <coughs> this uh, differential equation, as you notice, has a small parameter epsilon whose value is given uh, as uh, 0 0.001 and this small parameter uh, multiplies the highest derivative y double prime in this equation. So, you can uh, anticipate that this is uh, uh, going to be uh, one of the traditional boundary layer equation and you have to solve this subject to the boundary condition given uh, below that is y at uh, t equal to 0 is 0 and y at uh, t equal to 1 is equal to 1. <coughs> so, having obtained uh, this uh, numerical solution, uh, you should be able to comp compare it with the exact solution. We have already indicated that the exact solution of equation 2 is given as the quotient of this uh, two functions, which are essentially the exponential functions involving uh, which we have uh, indicated in terms of x, but please do understand this x and t are synonymous here and the runge kutta method that you are trying to use uh, here uh, given by equation 1 involves uh, calculating three slopes. And the slope uh, at the beginning point u n uh, given by k 1, the first relation. Uh, then uh, you would get a second slope, uh, which is uh, evaluated at u n uh, plus a fraction of k 1. <coughs> and finally, the uh, third slope k 3 is obtained uh, somewhere, uh, which is uh, uh, different from u n by the two quantities given in terms of a 3 1 k 1 and a 3 2 k 2. Having obtained these three slopes, k 1, k 2 and k 3, we uh, define the general runge kutta three stage method as given by equation A. That is u at the new time level is equal to u at the old time level plus uh, the weighted average of all these three calculated slopes k 1, k 2 and k 3. <coughs> so, uh, the usual way in defining this problem as we have discussed in the prior, prior lectures is uh, to basically obtain this parameters of this RK3 method, which involves uh, finding out those three AIJs. In this case, they are A21, A31 and A32 plus those three weights that we have indicated as W1, W2 and W3. <coughs> Having uh, obtained uh, uh, the expression for k 2 and k 3, we can actually expand it uh, in terms of a series as given here as uh, k 2 is equal to h f plus h square a 2 1 f f u than h 3 square by factorial 2 a 2 1 square f square f u u and h 4 by 3 factorial a 2 1 cube times f cube times the third partial derivative of f with respect to u. 
please understand that since we are interested in a third order method, we retain term up to h 4 to get the uh, truncation error term which is going to be proportional to h 4. <coughs> the same way you can expand uh, k 3 in terms of uh, the function f at the starting gate uh, plus this uh, various uh, functions and its partial derivatives with respect to uh, u uh, at different uh, points which involves uh, all the unknown coefficients a 3 1, a 3 2 etcetera, etcetera. Again this uh, we indicate all the way up to uh, h cube term. Now, uh, what we have noted that uh, uh, that we could uh, also write down the Taylor series uh, at the new time level T n plus 1 in terms of u T n uh, plus this uh, other terms indicated here. If we uh, equate uh, this Taylor series here with uh, uh, the term uh, given here as A, then we would uh, be able to equate uh, the coefficients of various uh, terms involving uh, powers of H. For example, if we equate uh, the coefficients of terms proportional to H, then the runge kutta method will give you uh, w 1 plus w 2 plus w 3, while the Taylor series will just uh, indicate that is just uh, function is uh, coefficient is 1. The same way for order h square term, we get the equation uh, 2 here and for the order h cube term, we will have two sets of terms. One will be multiplied by f f u square and another would be uh, multiplying f square times f u u and when you equate those coefficients, you get uh, this two uh, relations which are given by 3 and 4. <coughs> so, basically uh, what we note that uh, we have uh, 6 unknowns and we have generated 4 equations that allows us uh, choosing any 2 of them. Uh, those are your degrees of freedom and uh, in the following I am just indicating uh, one way of doing it that you choose uh, 2 of the w i's. Uh, once you do that, then from equation 1, the third w i is obtained and uh, you can solve for those a i j's and in the traditional r k 3 method, uh, these parameters are given by a 2 1 as half, a 3 1 as minus 1 and a 3 2 is equal to 2. Um, what uh, we have done, gone through this exercise, we have performed an optimization and looking at the next higher order truncation term and that we uh, try to solve and we obtain the following two sets, set 1 and set 2. So, essentially uh, this is uh, what our solution uh, methodology uh, is going to be defined by. So, we can choose any one of the methods and obtain the solution and that is what uh, rest of you, some of you are going to make a presentation. Uh, let us all sit back and listen to their talk. Aditya, would you please come? Okay. Um, good morning everyone. I will like to go through a summary of my few uh, observations uh, which I had during the solution of uh, assignment 1. Uh, so, um, firstly, uh, when you solve the set of equations, you get 4 equations from equating the orders of h, h square and h cube and uh, you have 6 unknowns which are on the left panel w 1 to w 3 and a 2 1, a 3 1 and a 3 2 and therefore, the system is not closed and uh, to uniquely solve for all these unknowns, uh, we require 2 more equations. So, these 2 equations were obtained from uh, optimizing the truncation error. What I mean by optimizing the truncation error is writing truncation error in terms of uh, 3 parts uh, wherein one of them is a constant uh, which does not have any variables w 1 to w 3 or a 2 1 to a 3 2 and uh, the other two terms have uh, our functions are some functions of these 6 variables. So, basically what we do is we equate those two terms to 0 and therefore, the system is now closed and we can uniquely solve for these. Uh, it turns out that uh, when you do when you do that you end up with two sets of solutions which are your optimized solutions uh, which are shown in the first and the second column. Um, it is quite surprising that uh, values of 
these constants are so far from each other in uh, I mean you can if you look at the uh, first and second panel and compare it to the standard RK3 which I uh, got from hopefully some reliable sources uh, it's quite clear that they're very different uh, with respect to each other in that if you look at A21 it's equal to 1 in the set 1 and equal to 1 by 3 in set 2 which means that uh, if you look at set 1 what it does is it shoots across the entire step size and goes to the next point and then calculates the slope whereas in the second method what it does is it goes to one third and then goes to minus 5 by 12 which means it goes in the upper di opposite direction and then goes plus 5 by 4 edge which means it shoots to more than edge to come back to uh, the third point so basically both these sets of solutions are very different from each other in their characteristics uh, but uh, so we look at uh, this is the question I asked here is uh, which of the two optimized solutions are more accurate if at all so what I've done here is I've plotted the absolute value of the difference of y n 1 and y n 2 where y n 1 is the numerical solution obtained from the first set of solution that is w 1 equals 1 sixth and uh, so on and uh, y n 2 is the numerical solution obtained from the second set of constants which is 1 by 10, 1 by 2, 2 by 5 and so on and I plot that as a function of t, t which is the independent variable and this plot which I have done is for a step size of uh, 10 power minus 4 which means I have taken 10,000 steps and I have seen what the absolute, how the absolute value of the error between the two optimized solutions the op two numerically optimized solutions varies with the independent variable and if you look at the order on the y-axis it's of the order of 10 power minus 16 uh, it's, it doesn't have a unique value it's, uh, it ranges between 6 into 10 power minus 16 to around 11 into 10 power minus 16 now it might seem that one method is therefore more accurate than the other but keep in mind that we are doing a numerical computation and therefore this 10 power minus 16 is basically the machine epsilon it is nothing but uh, the, it's nothing but a machine error the machine cannot do a calculation cannot represent something more precisely as 10 power minus 16 and therefore I believe that these two solutions are as accurate as each other to within machine precision so um, this is clear so what I've done here is I've plotted so now that we know that both the numerical solutions are as accurate as each other to within, within machine precision I just take one of the two sets uh, I think this one I've done for A21 equals 1 by 3 that particular set and see how that compares with the exact solution and done that for a range of step sizes uh, we expect that as you increase the step size at one particular step size the solution stops converging to the exact solution and shows large deviations from it and that's exactly what we see uh, the first four plots are as you can see the first one is for h equals 800 inverse 600 inverse, 550 inverse and 500 inverse you can easily compare the numerical and exact solutions uh, if you look at 800 inverse the numerical solutions uh, the numerical solution and the exact solution are indistinguish uh, indis indistinguishable from each other whereas at 600 inverse you can easily see that there is a red spike that is sort of deviating from the black curve the red one is the numerical solution and the black one is the exact solution and as you increase h more and more you can see that the error between the numerical solution and the exact solution keeps on increasing which is what we expect these four plots are essentially the key plots for 475 inverse, 450 inverse, 425 inverse and 400 inverse which shows very clearly that the deviation of the numerical solution from the exact solution it uh, really increases very rapidly as you increase the step size and uh, the solutions the program starts, uh, stops to terminate above a value of h equals 400 inverse or around 395 inverse which means that is the critical step size above which you cannot uh, the, that is the maximum step size that you can take for uh, to have a stable solution although not very accurate even at 400 inverse so uh, it it may not be very clear what the exact value of the uh, so called critical step sizes from these plots because they are taken at few values of h so what I've done here is I've plotted the root mean square deviation of the numerical solution from the exact solution. How I do this, I've shown it in the top left insert in the plot. Uh, 
I define the RMS error as uh, that which means there y n at x i plus k h minus y e at x i plus k h. That difference the whole square, and I summit that over all the uh, all the steps and divide by number of steps and take the square root. That's exactly how we define the RMS error. And uh, the reason I take the RMS error and not just the difference of y n and y e is because of this. As you can see, for example, in h equals 400 inverse, the difference between the numerical and exact solution is positive and then becomes negative, positive, negative, etc. So it makes more sense to define the error or the deviation of the numerical solution from the exact solution in this particular way. So this is what I've done. And uh, there yn is the numerical solution. Again, like I said, I've just taken one of the two numerical solutions because I've shown them to be as accurate as each other to within machine precision. So yn is a numerical solution, and ye is the exact solution, which I have derived analytically. xi is 0 in our case. It is the um, initial point of our x interval. Probably that should be ti, because I've taken uh, defined ti as the independent variable earlier. I'm sorry about that. Um, and k is the index of summation, and h is the step size, which is 1 over n in this case, because it is xf minus xi divided by n. So basically, that is my RMS error, and I plot that as a function of step size. And as we expect, the RMS error or the deviation of numerical from exact solution increases. It's very, very small for uh, the values of h around uh, up till about 10 power minus 3, which is 0 0.001 on the x-axis. But beyond that, it starts to rapidly increase. And you can see that. For h equals 400 inverse or 0 0.0025, and uh, for values of h more than that, the RMS error is uh, really, really high, which means that that can be sort of defined as a critical step size. Of course, critical doesn't mean that all step sizes up, up to that will give you sensible numerical solutions as we have seen. h equal to 400 inverse gives us pretty trashy uh, numerical data. So it would be advisable to stick to the range of the tiniest RMS error on that graph. I'm just trying to show, I mean, this makes sense because um, if you look at the uh, nature of the exact solution above a particular step size, I mean, there's a very sharp variation of the exact solution at the peak. Uh, uh, right, around x, e I mean, less than 0 0.01, there's a peak in the exact solution. So whenever the exact solution varies very rapidly, there's a good chance that the numerical one deviates from the exact one, as you can very clearly see there. It starts to deviate exactly at the peak. So for such functions, for such exact solutions which show very sharp, uh, very sharp uh, corner or very sharp peak in their graphs, we would really expect that above a particular step size, the numerical one does not converge to the exact solution at all, which is exactly what we see here in terms of the RMS error becoming very, very high above h equals 400 inverse. Uh, that is basically okay. a summary of my results. Anybody would ask? Uh, yeah, I think uh, we are now open for discussion, right? Uh, let's uh, open it to the floor. Anyone having any observations? Go back to, to uh, the slide. I mean, uh, second, last word, third, last slide. When you were showing the numerical and the exact solution graph. Yes, sir. No, no, after this, yeah, proponent and inverse. Yeah. What is that graph? Oh no no. Uh, okay, so inverse, yes. yeah, for 400 inverse, this is the exact solution. In all other cases, this is this is the exact solution. They should have indicated with an arrow or something. So this is the exact solution. Mm -hmm. This is a numerical solution. So I don't know why you're having two bands if that's your question. No. Uh, probably you have uh, three points that define this peak. You have two of them here and one on top. So it sort of looks like a triangular thing. I mean that is. That is an artifact of, I don't think there's anything to do, I mean, I don't think the two bands exactly have any meaning. Ah, uh, it does. Uh, do they? It does, what right? What do they mean? Utkarsh, what does it imply? It's like the first band is like, most of the time you get that, and but the particular band is for a particular that you go to the higher band. Well, I allow interpret what he is trying to say is you take a FFT and you will see there are two dominant frequencies. One corresponds to rapid variation that corresponds to the denser lines and one is a little yeah yeah. So it's a very easy thing to do 
for one to do is basically AK50. You, you are seeing it is an oscillatory solution, you know. That is a harbinger of any instability. It always starts off with some kind of instability and then it goes beyond control. But one thing uh, while explaining about RMS error, you made uh, the observation that uh, the excursion could be plus or minus, but as you can see in your case, uh, it was always positive. So, uh, it, wa it was not a uh, no, by uh, n minus y can either be plus or minus. Yeah, right, right. That's so, uh, you, you could have taken the norm, I mean, oh, just I the absolute value. value as well. yeah. right. So, that is what is called as L infinity, okay. okay? Uh, uh, what you have done is you have shown L2 norm. Uh, any other uh, questions? Uh, I was just find out what would be the value of h roots, how we can get the value of h whether that is the Well, you have an estimate for your error, you can uh, take a look at it, but again you did not uh, show the expression of truncation error, but uh, if you would have looked at the expression for the truncation error, you, you want to, if, if you want to take a look at your, yeah, you could use your notes and yeah, and if you could write it down. You would note that um, the truncation error has two components, one depends on the parameter of the method, another path which is independent of it. So, in that sense, this is not really absolute optimum because, yeah, Vishnu. No, 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 that is what, please hold on, let him uh, finish writing, you will see he get both the fifth and sixth from the uh, truncation error expression only, that is H4 and uh, Yeah, you can see that he is writing the leading term is uh, order H4. Well, while he writes, the uh, rest of you can uh, continue the discussion. Yeah. The number of, I think it depends on the number of truncation terms you take. Mm. If we just take the leading term. Yeah, so it is always like that. That is the way you define truncation error, is the next uh, neglected set of terms. So, what he has done here. Uh, you can already see there are two sets of terms which depend on this uh, coefficients, right? W1, W2, W3, and A21, A31, A32. So, those are those two sets. So, what I, I suppose most of you have done is put this equal to 0, right? Uh, that is one way of doing, right? Uh, is there any other way we could have done it? Yes, Shakti? Such a uh, differentiation of what? First, first this error first. with respect to? Right. So, that is uh, another way of doing it is uh, you convert those four equations into a two parameter family of uh, solutions, right. So, uh, ar arbitrarily choose. Well, uh, it, 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 it is probably, uh, if, if you plot the truncation error term with the variation of this coefficient, it probably has a global minima there with respect to those two terms, right. But there could be a third alternative. I, I, I would uh, leave that towards the end, so let the other people can also get in and, okay. So, we will thank Aditya, yeah. He has also got the second set of yeah. How did he get those?
Well, it's a, actually you, it, it turns out to be a quadratic in some of the parameters. In fact, I think you got three, right, Sonam? Well, how do you say it's inconsistent? So, why should that rule it out? If W3 is 0, that's fine. I would require less computation. Okay, so one of the conditions would be violated. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Aditya. We should now move on to the next one. Okay. Mohit and Himanshu. Yeah, you have the microphone and the chalk, you can probably it's good to keep this expression in front. Yeah, bot and on the bottom left, bottom left there is a cup. Click on that. The third no yeah, that's it. Good morning everyone. Uh, well the problem that we had was uh, we had to a second order differential equation with boundary values and we had to find, uh, we had we had actually to optimize the RK3 method for the computation of, for the numerical solution at various values of t. Uh, now again while uh, solving the equations we get uh, three set of solutions well, uh, in one of which a to 1 comes out to be 2 by 3. When you put a to 1 equal to 2 by 3 then by the other equations you find that system becomes inconsistent. So that value can be neglected. The other two sets have been shown here where a to 1 is, uh, sorry, the, the, set, the, the, the one that has been neglected was a to 1 is equal to 2 by 3. In these sets, in one of them a to 1 is equal to 1 by 3 and in other one a to 1 is equal to 1, uh, 1. and these are the solution that Aditya pointed out. Uh, next if we plot the exact solution, it uh, it's looks like this value. So, we can clearly see that it is actually a boundary value problem. The gradient here is very sharp. It, uh, it shoots up to a value of 2.6 in a very small interval and then it decays very gradually. So, it is actually a boundary value problem and uh, so we can see that the equation is a stiff equation and the value of the step size would determine the nature of the solution that we are actually getting. Uh, like we said, we get the two solution sets. So, uh, while comparing the two solution sets, this is the plot of the numerical error. The red one shows the numerical error and, uh, sorry, the numerical solution and the blue is the exact solution that we have plotted using uh, the code in C. So, this is the kind of plot that we get. This is the exact solution, this is the numerical solution. So, we can see some kind of wiggling here. As Aditya also pointed out, at h equal to very large value, it is 500 inverse. So, this is same kind of wiggling here. We can see similar kind of wiggling in the second solution set. As we uh, decrease h value, it is 1 by uh, 1000, so the wiggling decreases. But still the solution is not exactly correct because this is the region of uh, where the solution differs. As we still increase h, the solution almost overlaps with the exact solution and it happens in both the solution sets. So, we can see that the so both solution sets are almost almost identical. Uh, now, uh, since both both the solution sets are almost identical, so we take one of them and we uh, show the magnified view. Now, this previous So this was a region where this was a region of concentration where we uh, we were sh uh, showing some kind of pickling. So now we'll magnify that thing. Yeah. So, in this the value of h is 500 inverse and blue is the exact solution, the red one is the numerical solution. So, this is this kind of oscillation we get. As we decrease the h value, there is some difference st still present in this interval. We again decrease it, again we can see some very fine difference between the two sets. Like the blue is above the red one, but h, h increases, h decreases further these two solutions almost overlap. So, we can see that there is some value of h, optimum value of h uh, 
below uh, below which the solution would be this uh, good and above which like uh, somewhere around 10 to the power minus 3 if we do not if the value of h that we take is uh, greater than 10 to the power minus 3 then the solution that we get is not exactly a correct one uh, these were the relative rms error now how we calculate the relative rms error Is it any different than what uh, Aditya did? Yes. At uh, t equal to zero, we do not take because that is a point. Well, that, that is anyway zero. Yeah. Anyway, it Aditya doesn't uh, contribute. Aditya it doesn't Aditya. contribute. So this is the relative errors that we get from solution set one and solution set two. Uh, again, it depends upon the accuracy of the uh, machine that we are using. So for uh, h equal to 500 inverse, this was the error uh, for set one and set two. We can see that these figures are same. What differs is these values. Similarly, for the various values of h, so these figures are same. It's okay. Don't. We're only differing in the yeah. last values. And when we actually try to look, what is the order of this error? The difference in this and that. It actually comes out around some 10 minus 14 for some and 10 minus 15 for some. So, did you do a double precision calculation or single? Double precision calculation, and this this shows that. It's not only the machine error. There is a little bit of difference in the two solutions. Well, Till uh, here the solutions are same. Till this figure, but then they start. And that's also 10 to the power minus 8. So that's uh, 10 to the power minus 15 precision. The two errors are same up to 10 to the power minus 15. Can 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 you make a guess why it could be? Sir, anyone? Anyone in the class? Sir, again, uh, that's. <coughs> That depends upon the whole uh, the, I mean, the difference is coming because we are taking the, I mean, minimizing the truncation term. So, up to this order of magnitude, the truncation term does in the coming Which is why the effect comes after it is So, 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 I mean, what are we saying? Uh, no, but this is, uh, uh, we have minim we have done the same, similar kind of truncation or minimization, truncation and minimization for both the sets. We minimize the truncation error and no, 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 it is happening much before. If you look at the 50,000 data, yeah, I think it's in the, in the seventh or eighth decimal. So My so question is why they are different? Uh, Doesn't matter. That's my see when we talk about uh, uh, rounding off. We talk about significant figure, not the exponent. Keep the exponent out of the picture. Okay, so that's why you, you are still in a single precision domain, 10 to the power minus 8. It's not in double precision. You should be able to get uh, up to 10 to the power minus 14. So my question to you, all of you, to think because uh, Aditya also mentioned machine epsilon. What is machine epsilon? We have done two courses, some of you, but all of you have done the first course on computing, right? So, what is machine epsilon? What, what is this? What animal is this? Shall we have someone else to answer? Yeah, someone, Mamsi was trying to say something. Yeah. So, so what, what is this error due to machine? So, this one number can be represented exactly by the format that is uh, the, 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 the smallest number which can be represented by the machine. It's the, it's the double can be represented since double has a precision of 8. So, is this some kind of a mm, uh, sort of a barrier for a machine? Yes, or, sir, mm. uh, are, are we saying that we cannot represent a Uh -huh. So basically, I'm, I'm asking, uh, throwing back the question at you. Are we uh, saying there is a Lakshman Rekha beyond which we cannot do given a machine? That 
That is not correct. That is not correct. Have you heard of long double, yes, quadruple position? Yes, you can define and you can store the numbers. So yes, what happens is the same number. You can define, you can define it. No, no. Please try to understand what is actually done when you store a number, a real number. You assign some storage space for each significant digits, right? Single position. You would be talking about seven digits. Let's say. For some particular hardware, double position could be let's say 14 digit. Long double, it could be 18 digit. It could be 21 digit. So what happens when I am defining a quantity, a double position? What I am doing for each number? Actually, I am allocating two spaces, right? So I could do much more. I could do the uh, define quadruple position. So there is no such thing as machine epsilon, right? So it is something which uh, depends on our ability or our desire to express a number. We can do it, but at the cost of more memory and more computing time. And the thing that we are talking about, having decided upon the significant digit you want to represent, so you are basically rounding the number off beyond those digits. So this would be a better term to call it a eh? Round of error, okay. So you can have a different kind of round of error for different declaration of precision. I, I, I'm sure it must have been taught in your first course in computing. Okay, uh, you may mention that you have done uh, some calculation. These are coded in C. Java. Did you? Java. You did Java. Yes, Java. Okay. Is, is, is there anyone who may have tried to do it in two different languages and seen if, yeah, of course you did. What about the speed? Did you see any? No? No difference? Maybe this problem is too small? Identical, yeah. I did it in Java, she has done it in MATLAB, and uh, we are getting different results. So we, we still haven't answered that question. Why those two last uh, uh, entries are different in the seventh or eighth decimal place when the calculations are done in double position? Why would they be different? Because, as you can see. We have uh, identical prescription, right? Up to H four. Both are same steps. No, no, same steps. Uh, 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 in one case, we have value equal to one, in the other, we have one value. No, but uh, at the same time, your error is uniquely defined in both the cases. Uh, those two terms have been see. That's why I'm not surprised that those two sets of results are almost identical. I am asking you a throwback question. Why it is almost and not exactly? The answer must be staring at your face. Anyone? Sir, uh, that, that is probably, I mean, that is where when the machine is calculating, it is rounding off at that scale. Are you attributing it to round of error then again? No, we, we do not agree. Mm -hmm. Since it, we are using the shooting method, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, the error is uh, the, uh, the error might be zero for a same value. If we take the same value of initial uh, z prime, huh. then the error should be the same, right? But uh, when we are doing it by shooting a method, we are not exactly saying that they are converging to the same value in the same fashion. Okay, I, I think we'll go to the next presentation, and then towards the end, I'll come back to it. I, I, I think we'll go to the next. Uh, yeah. This is the, the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, Mohit, I would suggest to all of you, whenever you are looking at error like this, please use log scale. Otherwise, you are uh, not seeing the, uh, you, you are not able to distinguish between different cases. Okay. Okay, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, huh, huh. More efficient method have. 
in the region of t equal to 0 to point, 0 to point 0 0.03, uh, that is the region of the concentration where the gradient is very large. But if we take h to be uniform, like very small for the higher values of t also, then actually we are wasting the computational resources. So an efficient method would have been to take the sufficiently small value of t for smaller values of some sufficiently small values of h for t small. And as t increases, since the gradient is not that sharp, so we can even increase the h value. So that would have given. So we are all lazy. We didn't think and uh, reduce our work. You did. Well, I don't believe what is traditional. No, sir, Are we too modern? No, sir. Answer. My question is: taking, taking any arbitrary coefficient yeah. and taking the optimal coefficient, the amount by which it improves the error uh -huh. is much lesser than doing a, I mean, decreasing the. Ha, ha, has anyone obtained the solution with standard method and compared the error? Yes. You did. Okay. So I think we'll come. Why? Why? Why don't you just? Uh, come in and we will go to the next. Most of the things have already been discussed, uh, like, uh, obtaining how to, how, how to obtain the exact solution, the numerical solution and all those things. These are the parameters which you have worked upon. Yeah. Can't, can't okay. So uh, this was how we uh, like uh, moved on, uh, like we had to assume certain uh, value for y prime at x equal to 0 in order to march ahead uh, to compute the solution uh, numerically. So like we uh, employed the grid search method in which we uh, like, uh, uh, like we restricted a particular domain for y prime equal to 0 that is from 1 to 3000 because uh, this, this domain we chose because uh, if you uh, like go for, uh, go for the exact solution, you will get uh, y prime uh, zero to be around two thousand seven hundred and fifty in some value like that. So that is why we chose our domain to be like like this, and like we, for every value of y prime, we obtained the value of y at x equal to one, and like uh, that shooting method, you you will see if it matches, then it's better. Otherwise, we again go to the next value. Like we obtained values of y at x equal to one for all the values of y prime at x equal to zero, and we plotted it. This is the plot for y at x equal to 1 versus y prime at x equal to 0. Uh, you can see like for uh, if we want to have the like given the given the boundary condition at y at x equal to 1 which is equal to 1. So for that value if we like interpolate it we will get some value uh, numerically we get uh, I have got the value of uh, 2684 which is quite close to that value. That value, uh, this is the plot for the numerical versus the exact solution for 2684. This this line shows the numerical solution, while this dotted line, if you can see, shows the exact solution. So there is some uh, difference between the exact and the numerical solution, and if that difference, like uh, what, what has been done here, that is the uh, root mean square of that error, that is the difference between the exact and the numerical solution. If we plot it. We plot it. We we'll get us get something for uh, and this this is like error per n versus n. That is n is the number of uh, grids that we employ and versus n. So this is how we get. Now um, and one important thing uh, using this graph is like we can use this graph to in order to determine what should be our grid number of grid points to be employed like, or uh, rather what should be our grid size. As you can see that as we go on increasing the number of grid points, uh, the error per n decreases. And so, like uh, this, can give us give us an estimate of how many uh, grid points we can employ in order to uh, get as close to the exact solution as possible. That is provided you take h is same. Yeah. That's very uh, provided h. Provided space yeah. is same. Spacing is really long. So, I mean, based on what uh, we just now heard, that would be a probably a good idea to keep it in the inner part of the boundary layer. In the outer part, we, we could be a little more liberal, liberal right? Yeah, yeah. And probably even uh, that 400 limit is not a correct limit. I, if I were to do it, I would get the solution in 200 points by having variable space. Yeah. So th th that that's how it should be. So if, like, if 
we consider uh, this is the form of solution which we are getting so like this is quite uh, quite like a boundary value problem so what we are talking about is like if we uh, divide this yeah. domain in, uh, this whole uh, graph into two parts like we can solve for this domain we can have a different grid system and for this uh, domain we can have a different grid system for this since uh, the change is quite gradual we can have like the grid uh, spacing could be uh, not that like uh, refined as for this case so like we can have a non uniform grid system in order to solve this problem that could uh, that could uh, be much faster than like uh, having a uniform grid system and uh, like a refined grid spacing for the entire range coming to the conclusion part it is clear it, it is quite clear from the graph that as we keep on increasing the number of points our error keeps on reducing the most important thing to note about the equation was that it was a stiff differential equation and stiffness ratio was quite high it was quite close to 1000 it was 1000 so that is epsilon actually 1 over epsilon uh, it is 1000 so the grid size is grid size will matter most one more important thing we will observe that our solution is two parts mm. so if we take the as sir said if we take the fast fourier transformation there will be two frequencies dominating like he shows like he showed for the two modes so the nature the analytical solution explains that part also right so we also took some smaller values of the grid for which the solution in diverge diverges very rapidly so that also puts a simulation of the step size All right thank you okay so now uh, yes sir uh, i think now uh, we missed one of the presentation we'll do it the next class right uh, you would uh, get a proper uh, yeah sir in this uh, this the first graph in this case yeah let me first graph okay so you think there is it is always modulating Now, what what is the question? He is saying like uh, the graph is monotonic. Monotonic. So is it necessary that it has to be? Monotonic? It doesn't have to be. So, see the uh, point is what they have done is what is called the grid search method. You identify a parameter space which is defined by y at x plus one and y prime, and then you keep on uh, doing it, and then the moment you uh, find out where your far field condition is satisfied there uh you keep uh, zooming in that area and take much more refined uh, grid search and this method may appear to be um, more uh, compute intensive but uh, there is a beauty to this method is that uh, sometimes you may have multiple values at the wall that could satisfy the far field condition So, if you are doing shooting method, you always get only one of it. Huh? So, you don't get the whole uh, complement of uh, values which can satisfy the far field condition. So, in the grid search method, you would get the whole set of it. So, that's that's something that we could do. Uh, hmm. Suppose we have a higher value of uh, y prime, which is also satisfying. Yeah, right. Then losing that value by grid search method. No, you will not. That's what I, we are saying. That you have to. Have a, enough range, enough range. It is almost like your bisecting method, you know. I mean, exactly. yeah, yeah. Bisecting method. If we come close and then make our epsilon smaller. Uh, smaller. So it, it it is exactly the same. It isn't anything esoteric than that. Okay. So I suppose uh, the only thing that uh, we uh, did not uh, hear is uh, anyone doing. variable h calculation but you you see why i'm saying this because if you now happen to go to any of those uh, cant programs solvers what they have actually they decide upon the step size by local truncation error analysis so at each and every point you go there you find out what is the optimum h for that particular step so it is not like what uh, shakti said that for the inner layer you take one step size and outer one it's not necessary because your method does not uh, depend upon the fact that you will have to have uniform spacing you can give any spacing at any uh, point in time right 
So, that you could do. Okay. Now, only question that I uh, wanted to uh, answer was what uh, Himanshu and Mohit showed that even with 50,000 points, there were some discrepancy on the 7th and 8th. <laughs> the answer is very simple because all that you are doing, you are equating up to here. What happens to the next order? Once you have exhausted this, the next one will play the role of leading error, right? So, that is where the difference comes in, right? So, that is where the difference would be. So, there are no mysteries, right? Are there any? If there are none, so I suppose we now understand certain things. I did not discuss about various sources of error, but we have uh, talked about one thing uh, quite a bit is the truncation error. Today, we did talk about round off error. And unfortunately, this round of error um, does not get its due attention, but it's, uh, it could be a very, very significant uh, issue, especially when you are solving problems which are physically unstable. When a problem is physically unstable as opposed to numerical instability, those physical instabilities are triggered by some background disturbances, right? That is where the noise environment plays the role in a computed solution. So, that is where the round of error does play a significant role, but it has not been uh, very much well probed and analyzed, uh, but slowly people are becoming aware of it uh, lots of the time. For, for example, uh, we do some of this kind of work where we find out that an aircraft is flying at an altitude of 11 kilometer what kind of background disturbances we have and how does it affect the flow field. This kind of uh, analysis is uh, attempted and when we do that, we realize that round of error actually plays a major, major role. So, uh, what happens is there are all kinds of uh, uh, strange uh, prescriptions uh, suggested. Few years ago, I heard a French scientist actually took a patent uh, for controlling uh, round of error and which turned out to be total nonsense later. So, but, so that this round of error uh, is quite a, a significant uh, parameter to consider to be important when you are looking at the mean field like equilibrium solution like this we are getting. See, this is your equilibrium solution, right? The boundary layer you have observed, it is the equilibrium solution. Now, what one could do is perturb this equilibrium solution and see if those perturbations decay or amplify. That is how we do physical instability studies. So, the perturbation field uh, does play a, a great uh, role and that is where we should be paying particular attention to this. Uh, the one more thing that I wanted to tell you is about uh, this optima that we have uh, seen, couple of them. Hmm? that still uh, does not uh, factor in one aspect. How does the error depend on f? We have been totally silent, right? We have been playing around with uh, the coefficients of the RK3 parameter and we are talking about how to minimize, make these two components 0, but still this remains, right? Suppose I give you a problem where f is defined right i could do that for example this is what you can think of uh, negotiating in near future that uh, this is what we keep talking about so if i look at it i could write it like this so this could be a f right that could be the f that uh, we, we need to solve uh, for this particular problem. Then what happens? Then uh, you should then minimize the error not only these two terms, but all the three terms taken together. That would be a much more of a global search, right? Global minimum. And um, well, as you can see, uh, it is coming your way on as the third assignment you would uh, like to do. So, you can actually build up on your knowledge what you have done on first assignment, use it on the third and come back and share your experience. 
So we'll do that. We'll do that. So that's that is something that's uh, uh, something we have done. Now another aspect of optimization that we talked about. It's a uh, sort of a lopsided approach because we kept our attention focused only on truncation error. Right? Is that the only source of error apart from truncation and round off? We have already seen in our error analysis part of the discussion. There are physical sources of error which relates to, we have seen numerical instability, numerical stability also can cause error. We have seen if there are convective solutions, if they are going at the right speed, right, the group velocity is a major parameter, dispersion. So, you can uh, see there are other aspects of uh, optimization. Uh, I probably have mentioned to some of you. We do some such work. Uh, one of our uh, PhD student is actually developing a RK3 scheme. It is a PhD program. So, it, what you people are doing, it is not trivial. Okay? So, people uh, do look at a corresponding thing, but there we uh, look at all those physical mechanisms, how to minimize those kind of errors. So, if we have uh, a wave propagation problem, how do we minimize the error there? So, that is also something that we can do. So, it is good. I, I suppose now with this exercise, all of you understand that how one does research. It is not always something that you reproduce what is already there in the textbook. There are issues like as I said, George Orwell's quotation, huh? issues within issues. So, people, uh, when you go deeper into it, then you see there are lots of other uh, aspects emerging. right? I, I, I think uh, we had a very uh, fruitful discussion today, uh, unfortunately missed one, but we will catch up with it. And any of you, well, rest of you, if you want to uh, come up or discuss, please do it either on the podium or we can do it through the email. Right? We have a course ID, we can uh, bounce off ideas from on each other and I, I did not want to have this. Uh, chat group or something. I think that ends up becoming chat. Uh, it's, it's better to keep away from all this uh, fancy things. Well, I think with this I would now uh, say that we are mostly done. If any of you have any questions about this or anything else, feel free to discuss. We have uh, well another five, four, five minutes to discuss if you want to. In the last presentation, the circuit error by n versus n, which can be misleading because the error can be a constant and as you keep increasing the number of times. Which one? Which one are you talking about? Elliptic. In the last presentation. Uh, oh, that Shakti's presentation. Yes. Um, okay. Let me. Yeah. What? What? What, what is your point, uh, Manish? What's the rationale behind? Uh, this one, yes. So, it is a basically a sort of average error integrated over the domain. You have added the error for all the end points and then. Would error versus n be a better measure of this? Because this, this can be mistaken. This is always. Well, that is why statistics is not pure science. When you average out, you can put your hand in a hot stove and a chiller tap and you can say you have a normal experience. It is not true. right? So, that is a problem with all the statistics. So, be very cautious when you deal with statistics. Do you, do you know that uh, there are, all oh, on a lighter note, we, are, we have some time to talk about. People have found out a very strong correlation with baldness with Medicaid uh, support in USA. So, of course, the people who are bald, they are older and they also go to the doctor, but is, is that a good correlation to draw? Right? So, I suppose uh, statistics can be very, very misleading. So, error, of course, it obscures. Whenever you talk about averages, you are talking about only one statistics. What about the higher order statistics? So, RMS error is one, that is the second order statistics, right? Well, if you are fancy, you can go to kutosis.
skewness, all kinds of things, third order, fourth order statistics and find out. No, I said that if f is prescribed, then I could do a global search and I did not say 3, I did add few more that if we are interested in uh, optimizing certain aspects of error, like that is what we did, we corrected the von Neumann analysis from that angle, right? Okay.